Hondo. Hondo. I was talking to my mom yesterday. By the way, I am finally moving to Texas next month. So, praise the Lord. I was talking to my mom yesterday and we were talking about different things about um, church. And they recently started going to a reformed church just within the past year. I mentioned earlier that we, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, that was the first church, and then we moved to Bakersfield, and most of the churches in Bakersfield are more or less charismatic, there's a few Baptists, very few that are solid reformed, there's a few pastors that if you listen close, closely to what they teach, you can pick out some reformed beliefs, but they don't s explicitly come out and say that they're reformed or that they're confessional or anything like that. But there is one church that I found barely last year that is reformed. But my parents started going to a reformed church um, only last year, and my mom said yesterday, she said, I, I feel at peace, I feel safe with, with these people, I feel like I can trust them and share things with them because that's really difficult to find in most churches people you know if things aren't going well in your life they'll they'll look at you and they'll wonder you know what's wrong with you what's going on with you why why are things uh, why are you experiencing trouble and I think the experience for most people is that we have to hide who we are. We can't share difficult, painful things, even things that, well, especially things that we do wrong. And I, I told her, I said, it makes an enormous difference when your pastor teaches scripture and he says, first of all, that we're all sinners, that none of us has any hope without the grace of God that we're all just wicked wicked people from our hearts and number two that God rules over everything that happens and everything is part of his plan and he guides us and he leads us and he changes us according to his time and in his desires and his purpose but when we deny that and when we believe that our free will guides us and our free will orders things in our lives and that God is not in control because you know terrible things happen and how can God possibly be in control of all these horrible things well then we ultimately place the blame on these things on each other you know, on ourselves and not only do we condemn ourselves we condemn each other and we end up having to hide who we are and pretend and it's and it's horrible and it doesn't and it doesn't help us of course it doesn't help people who come to church seeking and trying to find out who God is and, uh, it's, it's one of the huge problems I think that that the Pentecostal churches have that the, the free will churches have the Wesleyans are huge with, with that they believe that <clears throat> you should all be sinless, that we are all sinless and perfect once we believe in Jesus. This is one of Wesley's doctrines. Because he didn't believe in the imputed righteousness of Jesus. And he didn't believe that God keeps us in salvation because he believed that that would cause us to sin. That if we know that we are completely secure in Christ, that causes us to sin. So he didn't trust the Holy Spirit to change hearts. He trusted in his free will. And so the Wesleyan churches, they're completely off the rails. But John 15, 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit from itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Second Corinthians 12, my favorite verses. He has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I, I will rather boast in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions and hardships for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Some of my favorite passages are in Second Corinthians. Paul talks a lot about, about struggle and the struggle of ministry and the difficulty and pain that we have and the comfort also in, in serving Jesus. Second Corinthians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ abound to us, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. For whether we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Whether we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is working in your perseverance in the same sufferings which we also suffer. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. In every way afflicted, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our, our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is working out for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal.